Hello everyone. Welcome to our Town Podcast series or ATPS as we like to call it. Every week on Friday we feature art and design professionals who take us through their journey in this fascinating world of art. Make sure you follow us on Instagram, Facebook and Spotify and with that let's continue with the show and dive deep into the ocean of art. a visual storyteller illustrator and a filmmaker his personality is as colorful as his instagram feed is he is none other than keshav ratnavel popularly known as keshart like all of us he grew up listening to the mythological stories but they left an impeccable impact on him the urge of expressing these fictional tales through a visual medium soon became his passion He offers a lot of tips and tricks which he discovered throughout his journey and experiences. They have proven to be very useful to many budding artists as well. One such campaign is 100 Days Challenge which gained a lot of popularity on social media. So let's dive into our conversation and get insights on all the advices he has to offer to us. Hello Keshav it's our pleasure to have you with us today and before we dive into our actual conversation i just want to ask you like how are you and how has lockdown treated you did you get any sort of in- inspiration from this lockdown first of all thank you thank you for inviting me over here appreciate that and boy i mean lockdown what do i say it's not it's not been easy and uh, it has definitely been frustrating but i think i'm one of the few <laughs> lucky grateful people who sort of live in an area where whether the lockdown is imposed or not i live in a sort of like a private gated community <laughs> so the movement is pretty easy for me but um, and everything else i mean not being able to go out not being able to you know go and see people right <laughs> i mean it is that has been really frustrating i don't know yeah it is is a mixed bunch of feelings i think we're sort of uh, over reacting to the situation of the whole pandemic maybe maybe just we need to slightly tone it down a little bit you know that, that's what i think yeah that's great to know that you are safe in your area that's really good so yeah. i hope all of, all the people around you and your family is safe so yeah. Uh, how did you develop interest in illustration and visual storytelling at the first place like were you always interested in drawing and painting and then you got to know that you want to do illustration or what was how was your journey uh, a, a lot of it has sort of this innate want to tell good stories right i mean ever since we you know uh, we we kids grow up with a lot of stories i mean in in our culture our grandma tells a lot of stories and our mother tells a lot of stories right so that aspect of storytelling has been very interesting and fascinating and you get all these weird uh, imagination when you sort of listen to those stories and that is what a sort that uh, what what inspired me to sort of get into cartoons and watching cartoons on television and that inspired me to say oh you know what i want to tell stories i want to tell it through say some sort of these visual mediums like uh, you know cartoons and things like that so that, that that's how i sort of you know got into this this whole thing of of telling stories visually i've, I've always watched cartoons ever since i was a kid and that combined with the interest in storytelling it, it sort of led me down this path where i wanted to tell stories visually through say videos and illustrations and drawings and things like that and you know that's how it all sort of started it, 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 wanting to tell interesting stories that attracts people okay so it's, it's actually very true that like in our indian culture we are brought up by hearing stories we 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 have a lot of stories and you know some some are like very mythological in nature and you know very uh, or you say very his- historical and some are very cultural and you know there's there's such such a mythical aspect to our uh, thing which is sort of you know this is go goes around i think not just in our culture apparently every sort of culture that has you know a good form of storytelling and a myth as a base uh, for its foundation so that sort of inspires a lot of artists actually yeah yeah that's that's pretty great so mm-hmm. um when i went through your work i noticed one thing that your blogs and youtube channel share a lot of hacks and tips for budding artists so how did you come across these tips did you invent them or did you just discover it somehow 
Oh, it's, it's 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 all about doing things, right? I mean, if you if you if you have been doing something for like so long, you will eventually find some say certain patterns and principles and processes that you sort of uh, see throughout the whole uh, journey, right? And you pick those things up and you share what you know. So that that is what I've been doing. So is is just me going through the process of actually doing something that is you know taught me what i know i don't i don't know that much actually to be honest but whatever i know and whatever i've shared so far is right is is what i've gained through the act of doing things and act of learning things and act of making mistakes constantly a lot of mistakes and uh, you know just just sharing that thing okay oh wait i made a mistake or uh, at that point maybe you might want to sort of look out for that is what i'm you know sort of sharing yeah it's pretty great that you are sharing your knowledge and i must say that it is helping a lot of people out there yeah, i'm i'm glad i'm glad i'm glad it i'm glad, super very very happy and glad it does humble by that humble by that so mm-hmm. all these tips and hacks that you uh, tell through your uh, content that is pretty interesting as i said earlier and one of these challenges that uh, like appealed me a lot was this 100 days of sketching challenge that has been trend- trending for a while now so mm-hmm. how did you come up with this idea like what is the exact story behind it and what is this challenge exactly okay uh, so so the thing was i've always struggled with building habits right building habits uh, and having them you know go on on a consistent basis and i've always struggled with that and one of the habits that i've always wanted to build was you know the act of drawing consistently or sketching consistently you know i thought if if i sketch a lot that will you know give me the mileage to improve my craft because you know drawing for the most part is is about getting that initial mileage in and uh, i found it really hard to say draw for a couple of hours every single day i mean whatever video i went online every other these professional uh, you know youtubers or you know, or or the, all these university teachers and all these people kept saying the same thing which is oh you need to draw all day long couple of hours a day till your hand breaks down <laughs> until you probably go insane or something like that and i thought it it was a bit too extreme for me and uh, i thought it it didn't exactly suit my goals and what i actually wanted to do with my art so i wanted to sort of find a system that was easy and sustainable and uh, something that i can actually uh you know consistently use to build my habit of drawing and sketching consistently and improve my craft so i thought oh you know what i'm 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 not able to draw for a couple of hours a day uh maybe i can make it so easy that i cannot say no me meaning make a habit so simple and so effective and so easy that you don't even think about you know uh using your will power i mean using your will power is very important i mean practicing your will power increases your will power but at the beginning you need to start small right so i thought hey i'll just draw for you know just 6 minutes a day and probably give myself 100 days to do that you know i thought maybe after 100 days i'll probably draw more than i have done before so i drew every day for 6 minutes a day for 100 days i made a video about it and for some weird reason a lot of people related to that idea and aspect and uh, you know they picked up on that and uh, from then the challenge picked on and uh, uh, the challenge was all about just you know what you just need to draw for 6 minutes or you know more every single day for 100 days and after that uh, a good habit will be formed it doesn't mean you have to keep on it's not about maintaining a, a consistent streak of days rather you, you just need to draw more than you have already drawn before or you know slightly more sustainable pace that you can maintain or something like that so that's what that's how the challenge came about in 2017 uh, yeah 2017 2018 i didn't do it 2019 i made it like an official challenge and you know share a prompt list and things like that and a lot of people responded and 2020 uh, probably you might have known so it, it has been really nice to see so many people participating in that challenge because wow well, actually to, to to honestly think about it it's it's really amazing to see that sort of grow every year I've, so i'm st- experimenting with applying this principle to say making projects and things like that you know like comic books and i've i've seen writers actually apply this and write like poems and uh, books and things like that so that is that is another fascinating thing it, it's so simple right this that that's why probably it works and again i cannot take credit for this this thing i just put it together and i'm just like a messenger but rather a lot of good behavioral scientists and uh, you know like uh, behavioral experts have 
you know come before me and have you know talked about these things before and i've just connected the dots enough to make it understandable for people so yeah yeah as the old saying goes practice makes man perfect right mhm true yeah. true very true so uh, we have a lot of artists and illustrators out what are some qualities that make an illustrator unique what are the qualities that makes an illustrator unique yeah 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 it depends on the illustrator some for some people it can be like the skill and the kind of illustration that they do the talent for some illustrators and artists it's like the stories they tell and for some other people it's the way they tell their stories and for some others it's probably like the experiences they share i mean there are there are people who share the same story but one guy does it through say like short 15 second animations and the other guy probably does it through say very cute little sketches on a sketchbook or something like that so you know all these things are unique to the person and, and what actually makes the Uh, an illustrator unique is being able to actually transfer themselves into their artworks i mean we as human beings are pretty individual creatures right where we're very unique with our uh, personal decisions and way we approach life and uh, if we if we if we adopt that into our art i think that would that in my opinion that would make an illustrator or an artist really unique yeah yeah that was pretty insightful and i hope it actually helps people out there So in the creative process, there are some times when you don't know what to do, what new to do, or what better to do. So how do you clear such creative block? Uh, how do you inspire yourself to come up with newer ideas and better ideas? Okay, I think I'm just coming up with an answer for just for this, with all the things that I've been lately doing. So there's, you need to do probably two things, or you need to probably keep two things in mind. So this this answer is also for myself actually. So one. Uh, wanting to be clear on what to do all the time isn't going to exactly help right you need to sort of contend that that thing which is that uncertainty of not knowing what to do uh, pretty much most of the time because if, if, if a- aiming for clarity or wanting clarity all the time is going to be a lot of trouble because you're never going to have clarity all the time it's like you're not going to be happy all the time or you're not going to be sad all the time so like you're not going to be clear all the time so that is probably one thing i need to tell myself so that is one two what i've been actually doing is uh, i've been writing say pages on my journal i write down say certain ideas that i want to do say for example uh, I, for me to draw on a daily basis i need to re- re- create a list of certain ideas that i need to oh you need to draw you can draw from life you can draw cars and uh, you know trees or you can draw cartoons you can take real life photographs and turn it into you know some sort of like a abstractual uh, drawing or you can draw uh, things from the japanese uh, storefront illustrations that's that's what i've been doing lately and uh, you can draw animals or birds or things like that so i make a small list on my journal as to say what i can do and i often go back to that list when i don't feel clear as to say what i want to do another thing is i uh, i uh, another tactic that might help is start a lot of side projects you know like mini side projects that you you know you just work on it when you have time and over time you sort of finish that you know uh, side project you know for you maybe if you're probably starting with guitar right you might have like a side project of say oh, i want to play a full song or something like that and you might you know you, you whenever you think about it you just sit down for like 10 or 15 minutes and play a couple of chords on that song and uh, and you rec- record those chords and over time you put together those chords and you have a an entire song right so it's just these little side projects and things like that here and there i think is what that i've been doing you know I, i'm doing this thing called 100 heads so i've created a folder on my ipad and just draw 100 heads you know things like that okay uh, the thing about thing about journal writing a journal that you mentioned that really helps a lot actually so, actually one one thing that really has helped me lately right i mean or in the past 2 years it has been learning to actually read and write properly and read and write in the sense think and write you know something like that thinking is a very underrated skill i mean it's not about like thinking random stuff throughout the day it's it's about like okay you take a particular thing and if you want to explore that thing you think about it like 
with purpose and with intention oh okay what is this thing oh why does it work like this oh is there any counter arguments to that thing okay and am i objectively looking at those counter arguments properly and you know and writing all these things and voicing it out clarifies our thoughts and you know probably helps us communicate a lot more that's why i do a lot of these podcasts because you know i, I every single time i find something new which is one thing like while, while i was talking to you i uh, i found out that you know what i don't have to be clear all the time about mm-hmm. things maybe i need to start being okay a little bit with not being clear and maybe being okay with a bit more of uncertainty about certain things so you know that that thing okay i'll probably note that down in 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 my head and probably you know think about it a bit more and probably come to a better conclusion something like that yeah the reading yeah. reading writing underrated skill i'm telling you uh, very very true thing that you said right now mm-hmm. uh, yeah. the work you are sharing on social media is actually helping a lot of people lot of artists to grow but when you were starting your own journey you must have realized some uh, mistakes of yours or maybe you regretted uh, not knowing some things right so what do you think are some mistakes everyone should avoid when they are starting their career as an artist oh yeah i mean i, I wouldn't regret anything i would i would probably say you know in in general right i think life and art is very connected and for me every single time i think about it you know looking at things from the past maybe a couple of things i have like couple of point pointers can i probably share that like this points because it's easier for me yeah so 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 one right one i would i would say i'll, I'll probably go through like a bullet list or something because i've I've, ton, i've made tons and tons of mistakes and i'm still making tons and tons of mistakes so one would be the idea the whole idea of this passion is thing this thing is extremely overrated it doesn't mean that passion isn't important but we have put passion on on a such a pedestal that we have so many lost souls not knowing what they want to do with their lives and instead rather people would be way better off just picking something that they want they that they remotely even like and do that on a consistent basis they will actually find more fulfillment and you know passion from that thing rather than trying to find that quote on quote true calling or uh, thing I, i don't think it probably exists exists i mean even for me as a guy right who's been drawing for uh, what ever since i was a kid like 5 years old or something people might think oh that was his passion from his early age but to to be honest i mean i didn't have like a passion passion for like a very long time and uh, you know drawing just became a passionate thing because i got really good at it because i put a lot of time in it and i it, it was something I remotely like so that is one and uh, two would be when you're you when you're young be be careful this is what i would say be careful about what you're being fed by the outside world not just the conservative side of the outside world because you know india happens to be a very conservative nation from the right get go right then we are very quote on quote uh, in the name of glo- uh, what do you say mm, modernization we are probably adopting a lot of westernization which is fine and uh, Uh, uh in terms of say in 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 the name of modernization or westernization we are uh, we're just adopting a lot of things without i even actually questioning it just because someone else other than our people have said it maybe you can it's it's, it's all about asking questions it's it's about like oh does this work well for me or does this not work well for me and how do i go about this and how do i go about that so all these things have you know has been uh, you know asking questions and not just blindly accepting something right uh, think carefully and you know think a lot question things a lot and ask a lot of questions and don't anything accept anything blindly even though it 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 quote on quote feels right right i mean it feels right internally oh that statement that feels right but you know maybe maybe you need to you need to sort of look into the facts of it maybe something like that yeah Unique and very important suggestion that you gave right now, and even I'll try to keep that in mind for sure. So, mm-hmm. uh, which of your projects are you most proud of? Any project whose experience you would like to share with us? Hmm. Um. Uh, something that so so this for me like my uh, I don't have this one flagship product that I'm or project that I'm extremely proud of, right? 
it's, it's always this consistent stream of work that I've done over the years for me because YouTube and draw, creating illustrations and things like that has always been like a small, small step every single time I make one. And the thing that I'm actually sort of proud of is the collective body of work that I've created rather than one single project. I haven't done that many big, big projects, but rather I've done so many of these uh, YouTube projects and tiny little art projects. I think I'm I'm sort of happy about almost most of them. So I would, I would say, you know, first thing that comes to my mind is that video I made called The Time I Tried to Be Spider-Man. It was this very weird animated video <laughs> and it, it sort of shared my story. When I was a kid, I tried to be Spider-Man and how that dream came about. <laughs> so, you know, that that video is something that I really like. Okay. Just wonder how uh, childhood can, you know, like inspire people to actually take up uh, their careers and uh, come up with new ideas. That that really wonders me. Mm, yeah, it is. It is. I mean, it, 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 I mean, your childhood plays a lot of, it plays a big role in laying down, you know, the foundation for you as a person, right? So, so it's going to definitely, you know, uh, it's going to affect what we do a lot. So, yeah. Yeah. So, uh, as I said, you are a visual storyteller as well. So, what is mm. your approach while practicing visual storytelling or filmmaking? Mm hmm approach right now is to do projects you know projects is one of the things i'm one of the another mistake which i made right starting out is not working on things on a project basis rather than i was just working on things you know as and when they come or whatever interested me or you know things like that rather i would have done really better if i just had like a small mini project that you know with the end goal in mind and if i sort of worked on say many of these small mini projects that had sort of like a good finish, I think I would have done really better. So, so, so what I, what I do now is one, I'm picking up say a lot of these mini projects, such as like say making a mini motion comic, which is what I'm working on right now and uh, making mini video documentaries and making mini shots and animations is what I'm doing right now. So that I'm, I'm slowly getting myself prepped up for say being able to make a little animated short film then hopefully that will help me prep uh, up you know so that I can make like a little uh, series an animated series of sorts and that will hopefully you know uh, prep me for making like a feature length animated thing or some sort of like a project so that that is my approach you know every single project I have a small goal and I set like a uh, I try to do something different with it so that every single time I do a project, I learn something new from that project and I take the lessons from that project to the next project. And you keep on reiterating that process over and over again. And, and, and you'll have this very good collective knowledge uh, that you've gained through, you know, through experience, through the experience of actually doing something. So that, that, is, that is my simple approach, actually. Every, every single time I take up a project, there needs to be some sort of a skill that needs to be transferable to the next project even though the project fails something like that uh, honest answers are really appealing me i must say that <laughs> i'm glad i'm glad that <laughs> so you draw you write blogs you run a very successful youtube channel as well so mm -hmm. uh, what among these do you enjoy doing the most what among these do i enjoy doing the most boy the, the, the favorite thing, right? The, the favorite thing for me to do is just put on a podcast and sit and draw. <laughs> Nothing more in the world can make me a more happier person than just putting on a podcast. No work, no, no nothing, no this, that. Just randomly just draw some random stuff. That, But that, I think that probably makes me happy because I'm doing less of it if i keep doing more of it i don't think they'll make me happy anymore i think this is all a game of you know going tick and tack right you go do this a bit of that and a mixture of this and a mixture of that so i'd say you know making projects that really adds value to other people seems to be the most reasonable thing that makes me happy so yeah i think that's that's what probably makes me happy 
so you are pretty good at what you are doing right now and as you said earlier you want to do some more valuable projects right so uh, is there any dream project in your mind or is there any aim that you want to achieve in the future oh yeah oh yeah maybe maybe i should probably so, some people say you shouldn't talk about your goals and some people say you should put out your goals into the world so that it manifests or something maybe i'll do a bit of both so the, the current aim that i have right now is one I have this program called Drawing Camp, and uh, that has been doing really well. I want to add the most value to the people who have uh, signed up for that, and it's quite a, a few people have, you know, sort of came on board for that project. And uh, I want to, I want to create the world's best drawing program that you can do in, you know, a span of 100 days. So that is the thing that I'm working on. And uh, the next one is I, I want to make a short film. I want to make uh, the bigger goal is five animated short films independently launched and independently funded and uh, uh, that is a big project but I want to start small right I want to start small I don't want to take a too big of a step at the beginning so I'm making a small animation uh, before that I'm making small motion comic and eventually I want to go to a point where I'm making say uh, you know TV series and uh, and uh, what do you say feature films and things like that that are that are you know there is a lot of artsy component in it and i want to want to really try to explore this animation space in the indian market because i think that's very fascinating yeah that is a uh, current goal though that is a current goal though you'll never know every single time i keep on stepping the end direction changes so once i make my first animated short film then it it might change who knows or make my first motion comic in my change i don't know <laughs> but again yes yeah, it's, it's all a process of just doing so right now that is the vision it might change you you talked about some animated videos and short films that you are, you want to work on so what kind of a topic or what kind of a content do you want to show uh, to people through those animated movies Oh it's very simple i mean stories that are really you know memorable and you know that makes change in in a person i, I don't want to tell stories to make a change in another person i mean that doesn't i don't want to have that kind of i don't i don't think i as an individual have that right to do so but rather i want to create stories that are very impactful on myself and send story stories that you know make some you know show some good time you know that are entertaining that are fun to watch there are you know that gives a laugh that gives you uh, something to think about you know something something on those lines is what i am thinking you know some sort of those stories all these there are there are tons of these stories i'm telling you <laughs> uh, so some mix of all these things you have talked a lot about animated short films and project related to this so what are the technical aspects one should look up, look for when they are uh, they want to go into this field or what is the process for making uh, these kind of projects animated films oh right for the animation uh sorry oh, are you asking for the animation yeah 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 oh okay uh, so so basically what what happens is one so the, the process depends on say the industry to industry i mean the process of uh, an uh, animated feature film depends uh, i mean changes from the process of making an animated say youtube video or a animated tv series for netflix or something like that so may i'll probably give you like a rough idea so the first thing all what what probably comes always is the story you know the people you know get a good story and uh, they write a good script or based on that story and they try to refine and perfect that script as much as possible for example pixar studios right they have an entire team called the story team and uh, you know and they often have these company wide meetings or these big large meetings where the director will be narrating the story to this huge group of people and they constantly challenge the director on the different aspects of story and uh, you know through that challenging and through that refinement the story gets better and it gets a bit more interesting so because in an animation making changes at the later stages of the production is very very expensive and very very hard and very very time consuming so they need to get most of the work done in the beginning to the to the to the uh, to you know great levels of precision so once they get a story done and uh, what what usually done is like a process called storyboarding they storyboard 
uh, the ideas onto a paper storyboard in the sense it's like these little thumbnail images of the frames of the film that are very sketchy and very scribbly it's not it's not meant for uh what do you say uh to for presentation or something like that but it's just to get an idea as to say what the character stands and how it looks like and how it moves and things like that and uh, then from that stage they usually convert it into some sort of like a, a edited version of the uh the film so they use the storyboards and create like a pre visualization is this very rough draft of the film through the st- made through the storyboard sketches and once they're done with that and depends on 2d animation or 3d animation so 2d animation the, the process is too big i mean to 3d animation they model the characters they build the sets and things like that in a 3d some sort of 3d software or program and they put it together then they animate it then they, they need to light it then they need to render it and then they need to you know uh publish it <laughs> and in 2d animations it's all about hand drawn things some of it are computerized and uh, you know and uh, they're made like using 2d puppets and uh, you know they draw things frame by frame and that's what that's how the old disney movies are usually made you know they're drawn completely frame by frame by frame and uh, it's is a big process so they at the end of it it's just a bunch of these moving images put together right you get this moving cinema this this animation and uh, yeah that so that would be the process of it and then that is just the production process of it uh, an animation film success highly depends on the marketing aspects of it as well not just an animated film but also like anything that you do you need to get it out there to other people right so the marketing is like an equally big chunk of the the uh, the uh, animation movie making process yeah so it was very informative and very insightful i got to know a lot about technical process involved in film making and that's it from my side i really really enjoyed our candid talk and it was really great talking to you so thank you for joining us on this conversation hope you liked our show You can give your valuable feedback and suggestion of speakers you would like us to host next by writing us on www.artdown.store. Stay tuned to our channel as we are going to come up with brand new episodes every week on Friday. Don't forget to follow us on Instagram, Facebook and Spotify. See you soon.